Hi Striders and Eagles, welcome to our first online lesson. Bow your heads in, heads in prayer. Father God, we praise you and we worship you. We thank you that you're our healer and our protector. We thank you that you're always with us in times of need. Father, we ask for your wisdom and your guidance by the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray a blessing over our time together as we spend time in your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, so we're going to read from Matthew chapter 25. It's about that far through your Bible. Uh, Matthew 25, 31 to 46. And while you're finding it in your Bibles, I'll tell you what we're going to be reading about. It goes back a little bit um, to Matthew chapter 24, where Jesus had rebuked the leaders in the temple. And he said that the temple would be destroyed. Now, when the disciples heard this, um, they thought that the end of the world was coming and they said to Jesus, when is this going to happen? Uh, so a little bit later at the end of chapter 24, Jesus addresses their question about um, his next coming. And he doesn't tell them when it's going to happen. Uh, he just says that they need to watch because um, what he says is that nobody knows the day and the time. And they basically just need to live their, their days as if uh, the master was coming at any time each and every day that's how they had to live so then it goes on to chapter 25 and jesus tells three parables or three stories about his coming and the first one is about the virgins and the lamps um, and there he emphasizes the importance of um, watching and being ready for the master's coming and then the second story he talks about the servants and the gold and he stresses um, that if we know that the master is returning soon, that we should actually be about his business, go about his business today. And then this third story, which is the, th the story that we're going to talk about, is about the sheep and the goats. Um, and there we learn about Jesus' compassion uh, for serving others and how we should live our lives with compassion and serving others. So let's go into that scripture now. I'm going to read from the NIV version from verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he'll sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate his people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He'll put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothing and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothing and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothing or sick or in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for, the one of, for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they'll go away to eternal punishment but the righteous to eternal life. So each of the three stories um, have a similar ending. They either end in dire consequences or great rewards, eternal punishment or eternal life. In the third parable, the story about uh, the sheep and the goats, um, we pointed to Jesus and his compassion and how this really instructs us when we know that the compassion of Jesus is returning soon. It actually instructs us to live um, compassionately towards those serving those in need. Uh, so he told in this parable, he told the story um, describing two types of people, the sheep and the goats. 
The sheep were the people who had compassion and served the needy people around them. And um, the goats were the ones who didn't. Now, why did they do that, the people who served? Um, what was their motive? Well, they weren't trying to impress anybody. They did what they did just because they saw a need around them and they were willing to help. And um, that was really just what motivated them. So uh, Jesus actually lived his life as an example of action. Um, and we should too, we should too. We should not just talk about this. So what, what is it that we can do? Okay, so answer these three questions with me. The first one is, what can I do to serve my family? The second one is, what can I do to serve my community? And the third is, what can I do to serve the world? Okay, so three, three questions. The one about the family I think is pretty straightforward, so let's just tackle that one first. Um, unless you've been living on another planet, you know that we are currently going through the COVID-19 global pandemic. And um, it's quite possible that your parents may, may have sent your domestic worker home for a few weeks uh, while we are sitting this out. So there are just so, so many ways that you can help around the house. Um, don't leave a, a stream of dirty laundry behind you. Um, don't create a tornado in the kitchen every time you fix yourselves a snack. Sometimes empty the dishwasher and don't wait to be asked to do these things. I mean, that would just be awesome. And I think your parents might fall over in shock. So the second one is how can we serve our communities? Um, because of the isolation that we're experiencing during this pandemic, they're probably all people who don't have family living nearby um, where just basic needs like going out and doing their grocery shopping is actually quite a serious challenge. So I just want you to take a moment and um, just apply your minds and just think about who's there that you can actually reach out to. Is there somebody that might need help? Um, just give them a phone call and ask them if you can pop around and you know just see what they need. And then uh, serving the world. Well, I can understand how you feel that this is maybe just out, out of your reach at this point in time. Well, I know of somebody who has made this super easy for us. Her name is Lisa Hugo and she grew up in Prairie Valley Church. She's a university student now and she's doing amazing things in East Africa. And um, I'd like to challenge at this point in time, each and every Prairie Valley Church teenager um, to join this challenge. We're calling it the 300 Rand Challenge because although the items that she's talking about in her, um, in her video that we're going to watch in a minute uh, cost 297 Rand, which is not a lot of money, um, every time she sees a deposit for 300 Rand coming into her bank account, she's going to know that it was a Prairie Valley teenager. And I just think that's going to be awesome. Um, we've got almost 200 teenagers and, pre and preteens, uh, just below teenagers. Um, so if we can support 200 uh, people in East Africa in this way, I just think it would be spectacular. So before you watch the video, I'm going to close off now and um, just... Hold your hands open like this to receive the blessing. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And may you all be blessed until Jesus our King returns in glory, whenever that may be. Amen. Imagine being a 15-year-old girl living in the rural village of Monkey Bay, Malawi. Here, people are faced with a lack of basic needs, where children often go to school hungry and have to repeat grades multiple times because their parents can't afford to send them to the next grade. Now imagine having your period amidst all this hardship. The 13 Rand for such a basic need has to compete with needs such as providing food for your family, securing a roof over your head, school fees and even drinking water. The stark reality is that when on their period, girls have no other option but to make use of bad shorts and plastic bags. This results in missing out on more or less five days of school every month. Missing up to 20% of their school days every year is making it even more difficult for these young women to pass their exams. 
and this is why 60 cycles were started. In 2019, five students from Stellenbosch University set the goal to provide reusable sanitary wear to the women in rural parts of Africa. One of these kits lasts for five years, therefore they next 60 cycles. The goal of 60 cycles is not only to provide these women with the kits, but to empower them to realize that their period is not something to be ashamed or embarrassed about. It's something we as women need to embrace. During 2019, 60 Cycles raised enough funds to provide 683 women with kits which were distributed in Monkey Bay, Malawi in January 2020. We thought we were going there to hand out sanitary kits. What we learned was that these kits represented love, care and so many unspoken messages of acceptance wrapped up in a bag of three panties and nine attachable bags. We often think that to change someone's life, we need to do something big and expensive. But this experience helped us realize that it's much easier and affordable than it seems. To fulfill someone's basic needs empowers them to be proud of who they are and what they can achieve. And this has the ability to change an entire community. Although this project has already changed the lives of more than 600 young women, we hope to change the lives of many more throughout Africa. And to do that, we need your help. To sponsor one young woman costs 297 Rand and gives you the opportunity to change your entire high school experience. Because no woman should ever miss out on another opportunity just because she gets a period. I really believe in what Melissa Burton said. She said that a period should end a sentence and not a girl's education. So there are various ways that you can contribute. You can either uh, pay by EFT, and the details will appear on the screen, or you can use Prodi Valley Church's Snap Scan. Just select the code that says uh, 60 cycles, and um, the code will appear on the screen in a few minutes. Thanks, bye.